Devin from Dr. Garage, and I'm coming to you from in my garage. Um, I sold some Corolla parts today, so I've made a little bit more space. Not much, but I got rid of a couple of hoods, and there was an SR5 axle sitting there, and there was an F SR5 axle sitting up there. Um, you know, so I've been kind of in the garage trying to look at how to get rid of this shell, and, and there's a question that a lot of people ask me about beams stuff that I haven't really answered. At least not on YouTube anyway. So I get asked a lot, what standalone ECU should I run with my beams? And so I'm gonna give you my thoughts just off the top of my head. I'm just sitting here in my garage with my phone filming, so I'm not, this isn't really a scripted, um, really well thought out. I just wanna put get my thoughts out there. So one, if you're trying to figure out what ECU to run with the beams, the first thing you need to do is find a tuner, okay? Find a capable tuner that you're going to work with because making sure that they are comfortable with your ECU choice and they're capable of tuning, that's the first thing, right? So when you find a tuner, you say, hey, I've got a Beams 3 SGE. It's out of a Toyota Altezza. It has dual variable valve timing. What ECU would you recommend that I put in this? And if they say, delete you know, delete the VVTi and use set pulleys, uh, cam pulleys, go find a new tuner. Because that's one of the best things about, v about the Beams is the dual VVTi. It allows you to have a really wide power band and it's awesome. Okay, so setting that aside, once you find an ECU, or once you find a tuner that um, you know can tell you what ECUs they like, that's great. Now, if you're looking for an actual recommendation on an ECU or something specific that you're looking for, or some, your, if your tuner says, hey, I'll work with the Link and Adaptronic and AEM, whatever, doesn't matter. Okay, so here are some thoughts. Um, I run an Adaptronic. <laughs> I run an Adaptronic M2000 in my drift car. I absolutely love Adaptronic ECUs. I met uh, Andy from Adaptronic before um, before Haltech purchased Adaptronic, and I love my interactions with him and with the company. Um, just by telling him a few things about my engine, he knew exactly what it was. Oh yeah, this this is the best thing out there. Um, this is what's best for me. This is what's best for my other company or from the other companies out there. And he did a, like a quick side by side comparison of like everything in the industry for me. And it was fantastic. So. I really like their Adaptronic M2000. That's what I run. Um, it's probably the best. It has like the best fuel strategy for any ECU in that price range because it's able to adjust fueling based on fuel pressure. So you install a fuel pressure sensor and you take it to somebody who is capable of tuning an Adaptronic. Um, they'll be able to use that to be able to it'll adjust your fuel pulse with uh, as pressure drops. So in case you got a fuel pump that's dying or whatever, you won't lean out and kill your engine because that is that can happen. Um, so that's why I like Adaptronic. That, I really like the software too. <laughs> I like how the software is laid out. Um, I like the different capabilities. The M2000 is part of their modular, um, modular ECU series. So you can actually add more like modules and boards later internal. So if you needed to add something like a wideband controller or um, I don't know, like a throttle body motor controller or something, you can do that. So that's why I really like that. Um, you know, I've gotten great support from Adaptronic over the years, so it's been it's been a good ECU for me. Uh, the next thing I would say is best uh, for a Beams is a Link ECU. Now Link has like Alteza Link and Fury and Monsoon. There's a bunch of different options of ECUs, and I'll be honest, I'm not well versed in them, um, but the reason why I would put them next on my list, and I'm just gonna say Link ECU and not a specific one, is because of the support from probably one of the best, I don't know, uh, Beams, companies out there and a bean swap companies um panic made so this is a little shout out to panic made um i've met one of the panic brothers super cool people they support beam stuff because that's what they run that's what they run in the drift cars you know panic made sells all kinds of stuff for uh for beam swaps they sell other corolla stuff like um upgraded uh axle shafts for the gts and Saka super axle just Good, just good dudes um, who make a quality product. So the reason why I recommend Link is mainly because of them. It's a good ECU, right? The thing that sets it above and beyond other ECUs is because Panic Made has gotten excellent support through Link ECU. So they make plug and play wire harnesses for your, your 8.6 with a Link ECU with the beam swap. Fantastic. Um, super great guys to work with. And one of them actually um, works for Link ECU like as his day job, if I remember correctly. So that's part of the reason why Link supports the Beams so much is because they have, you know, one of their employees who runs their ECU in their drift car with a Beam swap. So 
Um, yeah, shout out to Panic Made. If you're looking, if you're not like a wiring guy or a tuning guy or an ECU guy, just go ahead and you know find a tuner that's capable of link ECU, place an order with Panic Made for a wiring harness and an ECU, and you guys will be good to go. It's, the, it's hitting the easy button. From there, we kind of get into, there's a bunch of other ECU options, pretty much as long as it's capable of dual variable valve timing. Now, it's important it's VBTI because, you know, variable valve timing could just be an on-off switch, right? So that's what old school uh, variable valve timing was. Like on the blacktop 20 valves, it was just an on-off switch. But the VVT on a beams is continuously variable. So it's not just, you know, this degree or this degree. It's anywhere in between. Um, so making sure you get an ECU is capable of, that's important. Now, brands or, I don't know, ECU to stay away from. Top of the list is AEM, which really sucks because AEM makes a great ECU. The problem is they don't support the beam's trigger uh, pattern. So on the crankshaft and on the camshaft, you've got these tone rings that have, you know, a number of teeth and, the, and then a sensor. And then there's a blank spot, right? So the ECU goes, okay, one, two, three, four, 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 you know, counts all around, right? As the engine turning over and there's a blank spot is, okay, there's top dead center. That's how it can tell what timing is, right? So same thing, similar on the camshafts uh, has, has these tone rings, right? So AEM doesn't support the trigger pattern for a beams. And, you know, years ago I asked them because I want to run an AEM Infinity in my car originally. And they said, nah, sorry, we can't change that. We can't support that. They actually, at that point, didn't even own the software for their Infinity. They built the box. Somebody else built the software. And it's a great ECU and great software, but it was frustrating because they couldn't add that, that option for, for the proper trigger pattern. Um, so that's really the main reason why I say stay away from AEM. It's is, is not that it's, the ECU is, isn't capable. It's their great ECUs. They just don't support the trigger pattern. So you have to modify either the, the tone rings um, on your engine or you have to do some trickery with with the mapping, with the trigger. All this. It's, it's a huge pain. I know a couple of people have done it. It's just a pain. So that's why I say stay away from AEM. Now, a lot of people look at Mega Squirt because Mega Squirt is fairly inexpensive, right? That's probably like the biggest benefit to Mega Squirt is it's cheap. Um there are, I think you can get the MS3X Pro or something, and it will, it is capable of dual VVTI if you get an added VVTI controller or something like that. So you can configure it to work. Um, personally, I don't like doing that. I want something all in one box that's good to go. I don't have to worry about that. That's just me personally. I know Megasquirt guys love stuff like that. They love configuring things like that or whatever. So if that's what you want to do, you know, go ahead and figure out. You have to message DIY Auto-Tune or, or something like that to figure out how to get it set up right. But the the reason why I also don't particularly care for Mega Squirt is because the table size for your maps is limited to like a 16 by 16 or something. Most other ECUs, it's like an unlimited size. So on your map, you've got like RPM and and map or TPS or something like that. And that's how you put a fuel pulse with, that's how you tell it. Ignition timing, whatever, is based on these two axes. And you know, on something where you get dual variable valve timing, sometimes you need to fine tune certain areas. So you need to add cells in there. Unfortunately, with the Mega Squirt, I think it's a 16 by 16. That's the maximum that you can have. And for most cases, that's probably okay. And that's probably okay for beams as well. But as soon as you start adding things like boost or whatever, if you decide to turbocharge it or supercharge it, then things start to get a little hairy in my opinion. So that's why I don't really like Mega Squirt. Um, and that's, I mean, that's it. Okay, so that's, that's my thoughts on Nutshell on Standalone. I like Adaptronic. I like Link. Panic Mate is great for wiring harnesses, for plug-and-play wiring harnesses for ECUs, especially for Link ECUs. That's who I would recommend, I think, to everybody who's not a wiring guy is hit a Panic Mate and get them squared away. But the main thing is you need to find an ECU that's capable of controlling dual variable valve timing intelligent, right? So continuously variable valve timing. And find one that your tuner is comfortable with because... Personally, I feel like a good tuner, you know, or, or a great tuner can use whatever ECU. It's not a big deal. They'll figure out the software for tuning. No problem. However, I know that's not always the case. And I know that there are great, you know, great tuners for specific. They only want to tune certain ECUs because that's what they're comfortable with. There's different safeguards and other things that you can add to the tune that some people just don't know how to set up because they're not familiar with it. So that's the other thing is making sure that your tuner is, is capable of it. The ECU to avoid is AEM. And if you like mega squirt have at it just not a personal preference for me um so yeah that's it my arm's getting tired from holding my phone but uh 
That's my thoughts on standalone ECUs. Maybe I'll put something better together a little later that's got some actual comparisons, but uh, yeah.